Thank you, Lisa, and thank you for the invitation to speak here in this distinguished panel. Um, talking about democracy in Iraq, um, maybe uh, it's interesting in some way, asking uh, to establish a democratic state in the Middle East is a tough ask uh, by any stretch of imagination. Having said that, uh, Iraq have adopted the uh, democracy uh, very well. We have held uh, five elections since 2005, and we had five handover, peaceful handover of power between one government to another. And interestingly enough, we um, October 10 was the latest election where we are still uh, working on, or Iraq is still working on uh, ratifying the results and uh, getting into forming a new government and yet a new handover of power. But democracy in Iraq is not without its troubles, uh, given that we live in a very troublesome region. And you have asked for uh, looking into the drivers that really put stress on the democracy process and so on. So I'm going to stick to that rather than anything else. And uh, I have identified uh, the four different uh, external and internal uh, drivers that affects the, the, the process itself. Uh, given that we are in a conflict zone and we have lived uh, in many wars since 2003, starting with the uh, Iraq liberation and, and what we call it the Gulf War, and after that we had the, uh, the Al-Qaeda terrorists uh, taking over in some areas and, and all the conflict that followed, then we had ISIS. Obviously ISIS was occupying three governorates in Iraq was uh, very tough and what followed in the ISIS war. And that has created big divides in the society and we're still living with its aftermath, uh, uh, dealing with the, um, with the aftermath of the ISIS war and the atrocities they committed. Um, a second one would be the US-Iran conflict where Iraq has become an arena for that conflict in many ways. And given that both sides have a huge leverage over Iraq and Iraqi politics, and each one pulling Iraq to its direction, and that created big trouble for Iraq and its democracy. And, and especially in the past where we see um, this uh, conflict reflected in the pulls and, and push for uh, in government formation, where one one party wants something and, and, and the other side wants something completely opposite. And that was vividly displayed in 2018 government formation. Thankfully, this time around, it looks like that they both uh, um, have a hand's length uh, uh, distance to this process until now. And from our conversation with both sides, that seems that they are not going to be diving into the same process this time again. So that, that would be a really important factor uh, in that point itself. And clearly the other thing that uh, affects the process, the democracy process in Iraq is sectarianism. Uh, uh, the Iraqi society, due to all the conflicts that it's lived through, uh, we are now live in a sectarian society in general where we are divided among many sects and, and perhaps the most uh, obvious three is the Shia, Sunni, and Kurdish divide were uh, based on religion and nationality. And, and that has rooted down into the democracy process itself, where now we see that we have Shia parties, Sunni parties, and Kurdish parties. And we don't have really a cross-sectarian uh, party or coalition where they could come down to participate in the process and get votes. A Kurdish party will not get vote in in the Arab area, uh, a Shia party will not get vote in the Sunni area and so on. There has been some attempt to break this, uh, uh, this, this, this uh, sectarianism, but with a limited or no success. Um, although it's, it's very much present in the minds of the Iraqis, and many of the Iraqi nationals believe this is a really uh, not a healthy uh, um, fact to have within the society and within the political process. But nonetheless, uh, it is something that exists and, and need to be eradicated to and go to citizenship rather than sectarianism. 
Another driver that really puts a lot of pressure on the uh, um, on the democracy process is corruption and mismanagement. We have lived through various governments and, and uh, the political process has been uh, one of consensus. Uh, every government that we have formed in the past has been consensus among the political parties. And this has resulted in total mismanagement in the infrastructure and in reconstruction of Iraq after going through so many wars and obviously the uh, ISIS war and all that and the corruption that also accompanied uh, um, this process. We have not been able to fully get rid of this, although there are calls for reform and there are calls for fighting corruption and so on. Uh, so that, that on its own uh, contributes to a lot of money, which is money from corruption, money from embezzlement that channels through the democracy process in a way that many candidates are able to spend big amounts of money or many political parties who are benefiting from the corrupt system that existed. Now they are funneling back some of the money into the elections and, and then create even more leverage and more power for themselves. Uh, uh, in, 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 in that uh, process. So it is something that we are looking into uh, uh, helping with that, or the reform could help in terms of uh, uh, correcting this aspect. But this is also the corruption, the mismanagement, uh, and the elitism that created uh, the process, created uh, affects the uh, democracy process and the elections. Uh, the positive aspect of the latest election that we have seen, if I uh, mention, would be that the Iraqis now realize through the ballot box they can make change. We have seen uh, the protest movement in 2019 and resulted in the resignation of the government. And, and those protesters took part in the latest election and they have won uh, many, many seats through either running as independent or as a political party that derived from the uh, the protest movement. And now that encouraged the others because the protesters were divided between those boycotting the election and those who took part. And now even those who boycotted the election are thinking to run in the next election. And we will have a, 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 a local council uh, or, uh, or provisional uh, election next year, many of them now saying that we will take part in the upcoming local elections because now they see the fruit of the democracy and the fruit of, of the process where they could, you don't have to go through a revolution to make change, but you can go through the ballot box to bring about change. And change on the local level perhaps is, is an easier and better start to have. So all in all, in my opinion, the democracy process works in Iraq. It has its shortcomings here and there, but we have managed successfully to adopt it and, and to work with it. And hopefully it will continue uh, uh, in that way. And thank you.